paper, player by player, position by position, it's hard to find a roster that matches up against Stanford. But don't tell Arizona to say that. This is a team who is picked to finish 10th in the Pac-12. They end up finishing third, and here they sit at a regional, the only team to give Stanford a loss in conference play, and they did it in dominant sweep fashion. Well, they have a dominant swinger on the right side, the big lefty, Marta Levinska, is so, so good. You may not know about her, but you're about to find out. If you aren't familiar with Marta Levinska, please stick around and meet her. She is the engine that has powered this unbelievable season for the Sun Devils. She is fantastic offensively, both out of the front row and the back row, but she's also a terror from the service line. For Stanford, you probably have heard a lot about Kendall Kipp. She repeated this season as the Pac-12 Player of the Year. She is the picture of athleticism, plays so high and so physical above the net. Like Levinska, she will swing primarily from the right side, and she's known for her offense, but in their most recent five-set win over Houston to advance, her block was just as important. Something's got to give. You think about the two matchups this year. Stanford dominated Arizona State here at Maples, handing Arizona State their first loss of the season. But in the rematch, October 29th, it was all Arizona State. It was a blowout. That was the most recent meeting. And as you mentioned, that's the only loss for Stanford in the Pac-12. This regional semifinal day began at noon Eastern time on Thursday, and now at 12.50 a.m. <laughs> Eastern time on Friday, the final match is finally underway. Great diving play by Katie Baird to keep Stanford in the first point, and there is Levinska with Elena Ogilvy there on the receive, and that one jumps in, and it's a point for Stanford. In front of a loud, enthusiastic crowd that waited patiently for our first match to take three hours and ten minutes before Texas pulled it out. A marathon of a match, and every point of it was absolutely incredible. Here's Katie Baird. Ogilvy with the dig. Set back by Kip. Miner with the set off hands. Diving play to keep it alive. Long rally on the second point. Some contact in the net and a point for Arizona State. And Arizona State likes to get Stanford into long rallies and put some pressure on them. Take away first swing kill opportunities that Stanford is somewhat accustomed to because of their big physical offense. With Jelly Sierra playing really well the last six matches, hitting over 300 in each of those six matches. Minor, the block goes out of play, the kill for Ilya Rubin. And I know you talk about the players we know about, like Katie Baird and Kendall Kipp. But Leah Rubin is playing at an elite level for Stanford right now. She may be their best player at the moment. I absolutely agree. I think she is the X factor in the NCAA tournament. She is a leading one with four kills per set more than any other player for Stanford right now. Shoved over the net by Habello. Battle at the net, set back. Habello. Gets the point for Arizona State. Arizona State will utilize the speed of offense, and particularly that's going to be important to Habello when she's going up against Kendall Kip. She's going to have to find just a, a, a glimpse of, of light in that block between, between those blockers for her to get one through. Shit over the left side. Ruben drops in another one. Elia said yesterday that last year in the NCAA tournament, she was just trying to make it through game by game. This year, playing with confidence, mm -hmm. and the sophomore is playing great. Only a freshman last year, and asked to do a whole lot in six rotations, so you can understand why she would feel that way. Arizona State answers back to tie it again at three. McLaughlin out of the middle, and that's not a player that they're going to utilize a whole lot offensively, to be honest with you, but I like the choice of going there early on, try to establish the middle, try to hold that block as much as possible. Miner sets it back, and that one is going to be off the mark on the swing by Sandy Francis. And Arizona State 
has its first lead. When you talk about how you think this match is going to play out, and we talked about the two sweeps for the two teams, it was who controlled the service game and who passed better. And these are two great serving teams and excellent passing teams. Who will have the edge today will determine it in the eyes of both coaches. That one's out of play in Arizona State's up by two. Well, that point right there is a great example of what you're talking about, Eric, because it was the serve from Shannon Shields, their setter, that put Arizona State in the driver's seat there. She created an overpass, and they were ahead in that point from the very beginning. That's what they're going to try to do. It's not just about aces, but putting pressure on your opponent. If you can pull that setter off the net and take away at least one hitter, all of a sudden it becomes a lot more defendable. Cabello rolls it over. Minor goes back on the block. It's Arizona State getting it done defensively, and they are fired up here in set one. Arizona State taking the court with a whole lot of confidence, and why would they not? As we said, Stanford's last loss and only loss in conference play came at the hand of Arizona State. 4 nothing run right now for Arizona State. Back row attack and the kill for Kendall Kip. There's her first kill of the match. Such an important weapon for Stanford in their two-hitter rotations to give them that third option. And right now, Arizona State, only one block looks like they're trying to commit to Kendall Kip, and even that block is late getting up. Kenny Miner does a good job there. Oh, good save by Levinska before heading over the chairs at the bench. That one is off the mark. Attack there on Baird and a point for Arizona State. Levinska got there. That is Arizona State's brand of volleyball, all out. They know that they have to play with a lot of emotion, a lot of intensity. They say they want to be flying around defensively. That's another attack error for Stanford. They are cold on the attack so far, with the exception of Ruben, Francis, and Baird both hitting negative so far. Eric, you alluded to our marathon match between Tennessee and Texas prior to this, and I was interested to see how these teams would take the floor with what sort of energy after having to wait for so long that I like the energy we're seeing from both. Make it two kills for Kendall Kip now, coming out of the back row. That makes it 8-5. Anna Pringle will come on to serve for Stanford. <laughs> Off hands and a point for Arizona State. That's Jelly Sear, who had nine kills and eight digs in the win against BYU. And you talked about the impressive win for Arizona State over Stanford. Maybe the most impressive win of the season was the last game for Arizona State where they swept BYU at Smith Fieldhouse in Provo. Just four lead changes in the match. They were one of three teams to pull an upset in the second round, but the only one to do it in sweep fashion. They just dominated round one and two. On the road. Dug out by Stroll. Set back, here comes Kip with another attack. And that one is in, and now J.J. Van Neel thinking about grabbing the challenge card, looking down to his assistants. I could just read a couple of saying, I don't know. Right. Doesn't want to use it quite this early unless he's certain, and the assistant coach is sitting there right along the end line and convince him to hold it. Made a quick move over to the card and was talked out of it just as quickly it looked like. Series blocked. There's Lipinska off the block. Stanford hanging in there defensively. Off the hands and a point for Kendall Kip on the kill. And that's where Arizona State feels like they can really challenge Stanford as they get them into the long rally. Stanford shows their defensive prowess there stays with it and comes up with the big kill to finish it off. Cammy Miner, two-time Pac-12 center of the year with a service error, first for the match for either side, and Arizona State back in front.
by three. Here's Levinska. When she's on from the service line, she is on. She was certainly on against BYU. Good hustle plays. Ogilvy got there, but couldn't keep it in play. And Arizona State up by four here in set one. And Levinska did her job here with a really nice pressure serve. She creates a one option situation. But unfortunately for Arizona State, in this particular rotation, the one option is Kendall Kipp. That's still a pretty good option, so it still takes an elite defensive play to stop him. Levinska, five aces so far in the NCAA tournament. That rolls down the tape. Shields looks for the dump and couldn't clear the net, so it's a point for Stanford. Stanford went five in their last match against Houston. Those two sets to none lead for Stanford. Then Houston playing with their backs to the wall, took set three, that carried over into set four, but then Stanford hit 353 in the fifth. Facing elimination in this building. Levinska with a rip from the back row. That is so dynamic. It's just long though. Oh, it is off the mark. Well, she was pumped up. She thought she had it. No challenge coming, so the Stanford Cardinal get the point. Katie Baird served that one right at Troll, who passed a perfect ball. We'll see if she goes away from her this time. Arizona State out of sync on the set to Sear. And Stanford, despite six attack errors in this first set, is within one. That ball well off the net from Shannon Shields there. Just didn't look like the location was right for Jelly Sear. They continue to serve down the line here, though, probably hoping to disrupt the flow of the attack coming out of the backcourt from Levinska. Serve it towards the line. Here comes a better attack here for Arizona State. Miner sets it back for Kip on the kill. Tied in the water. This is a beautiful push from Cami Miner. Look at her pulled into left left front and the strength of her hands to get it all the way out to Kendall Kip and to have it right there in that spot where she has every every angle to take a swing at that ball. Four nothing run for Stanford to tie it at eleven. Blair Jeter there for Arizona State on the block, the middle from Missouri City, Texas. Honorable mention, all Pac-12 selection. Eighth in the Pac-12 in blocks per set this season. And five blocks in round two against BYU. That gives her 13 total blocks now in the tournament. Kip kept it alive, but they ran out of room. Couldn't get there in time in Arizona State. Back-to-back -back points after the Stanford run. And how about another block for Jeter to go along with the 13 she, you just mentioned that she already had in the tournament. Three blocks for Arizona State. None for Stanford so far. Ruben Long. Point Sun Devils. Both of these teams pretty fired up. We've seen a couple long swings from both sides. They've been waiting a while. They've got some adrenaline flowing. And an ace. Arizona State's the first team, the 15. They're on a four nothing run here at step one. 95, their first time ever with two wins in the tournament, and they do it for a first-year head coach. J.J. Van Neal, one of the top stories in college volleyball this season. He wasn't hired until December 29th, so he's been on the job less than a year. As Stanford comes out with a kill out of the media timeout, and Arizona State won 28 games last year. They won 13 matches a season ago. He was in the financial world for 12 years, and we joke with him. We're like, well, you went to the lucrative coaching world, and <laughs> He's like, yeah, well, I'd like to thank my wife for understanding my craziness about that, but he just wanted to be a volleyball coach and be around volleyball. And 
I don't even think he could have predicted that they'd be at this point playing Stanford after two wins on the road in the NCAA tournament. He was confident that his team would make it to the NCAAs. He's a very confident guy, but to be at this point after how they played in Provo as well with two sweeps, very, very impressive. It's a great story. This is a team that only had nine players when he was there in the spring. Not enough players to even, you know, scrimmage with one another without help from some male practice players. And, you know, he's so analytical coming from the finance world, and yet he said he had to put that on hold and really focus on the people in front of him and build trust and relationships because he knew that would go so far. And boy, was he right. Kip finds the opening and gets the kill. We talked about her athleticism, the height she plays above the net, and there is a great example of that as she's able to go up and over with that tip and push it deep into the center of the court. That's already seven kills. And we're midway through the first set. Cabello. That's one's going to go off the mark. Stanford did not touch it. And the Cardinal on a 4 nothing run. Got a handful of runs so far here in this first set. I think Arizona State's going to call a timeout. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're going to call a timeout here with Stanford on a run. A reminder coming up on Sunday, the Invesco QQQ doubleheader on ESPN. The Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase at Mohegan Sun Arena, South Carolina, number one team in the country taking on Utah. Then it's the WNBA Draft Lottery from Bristol and then back to Mohegan Sun for UConn and North Carolina. Four top 25 teams meeting on Sunday on ESPN. Kevin Hambly has his team deep in the NCAA tournament again, 28-3 and three on the season. Of course, winning NCAA titles in 2018 and 2019. Coming off what for Stanford is their 21st and final Pac-12 championship. Five of those titles coming on Hanley's watch. And three players on this group were a part of that 2019 championship. The Cheney, Baird, and Kendall Kipp, who played in one play in that 2019 match. <laughs> and they would like to start their career with a national championship and end it as well. Swept Wisconsin and Pittsburgh to win the national title in 2019. Knocked off Nebraska in five previous years. Breaking down the numbers so far, his team getting 0-69 in the first set. Arizona in a flat zero. Hitting so far, four errors for Arizona State, nine for Stanford here in set one. Kavinska denied. Stanford in front. This is a two hitter rotation. Trying to use Lavinska out of the backcourt as that third option. Stanford has consistently served into right back and tried to sort of jam up her attack line. Abello with the swing, and that one drops in, and that ends the 5 nothing Stanford run. And passing is so important for Arizona State because for them to have success offensively, they have to lead and lean into the speed of their attack. And Abello that time goes really fast down the line, and that gives her a good look against Kendall Cook. Kip. That's another one. Eight in the first set for Kendall Kip. There is no defending this. This is Kendall Kip's athleticism on full display, up and over the top, deep into the corner. 16 kills in the five set win against Houston. Arizona State gets the point back on the service here. Even at 17. For as good as Stanford has looked at times, nine errors from the attack. A couple service errors from Stanford to go along with that. Francis off the mark. Point Arizona State back in front here in the first. This is a Stanford team who returned seven starters from a season ago. 
who had a very disappointing loss here on their home court in the regional final to San Diego. And Sammy Francis, who you see there on your screen, had just returned to the lineup, had been out for some health issues, just back in the lineup when postseason began. So even though they return everyone, they feel like they're, they're really running on all cylinders more so than they were a season ago. Kelly Rubin, back to serve for Stanford. Even at 18, set one with the best of five. Levitska. Minor. Good block by Habello with McLaughlin at the net. Baird off hands. Back set, Levitska. What a kill. Make it two now for Levinska, and it's taken a while to get those two. If you would have told me Levinska with two kills and Kendall Kip with eight already, I would not think Arizona State would be leading by one. Levinska entered play today, yesterday, tonight. I got to keep it all straight. Fourth in Division One with 554 total kills. On the back row attack. And if you're Cammie Miner, sometimes decision-making decision, ma decision just isn't that hard. Find Kendall Kip, get her the ball. Nine kills for Kendall Kip, hitting 467 here in set one. Pringle back on the serve. And a service error, that's number three for Stanford. So three service errors, 10 attack errors for the Cardinal here in set one. Yeah, they've been aggressive, sometimes to their detriment, but playing with a whole lot of energy. No back down right now from either of these teams. Diving play by the Libero Schroll to get there. Puccini pulled it off the net and trying to keep it alive with the foot was Sear to no avail. Point for Stanford, tied at 20. Cammie Miner, ready to serve for Stanford, even at 20. And almost brushed the scoreboard. Sear. Off the touch, point Arizona State. Sear at five foot ten. is just such a solid six rotation player for this Arizona State team. Really a glue for them, what she does and the consistency. Miner tried to get it to Vicini, didn't work out. And Arizona State's on top by two and Stanford's going to take a timeout. Arizona State has not been piling up the kills so far. As a matter of fact, they've been outkilled so far 15 to 7 by Stanford, but those errors costly for the Cardinal here in set one. Just seven kills for Arizona State compared to 15 for Stanford, and it's Arizona State on top by two. Yeah, pretty error prone here in set one as both of these teams are trying to settle in. Stanford hitting for 103. And Arizona State only hitting for 059, leads by two. One block for Stanford, four for Arizona State, so they're plus three in that category, but have doubled up. Stanford has doubled up Arizona State, as you said, in terms of kills. So very interesting numbers here in this first set as these teams finding their way. Two teams, so much for um, an unfamiliar foe in the tournament. That's right. No surprises tonight. These two teams very familiar with one another. We've already seen one conference matchup earlier today between Kentucky and Arkansas. And it was Arkansas getting the best of Kentucky finally in that third meeting. And we see a conference champion go down. We're very much in the same situation here tonight between two conference foes. Stanford, the conference champion. However, it is Arizona State with that most recent win between them in the meeting between these two. 
just a reminder, Louisville, Arkansas went five sets. Yes. Just, you know, if you're, if you're trying to tell me like a conference matchup is going to go five, and we just had a three hour and ten minute five set match. Right. Just to be clear, I may have said 15, 11 attack errors for Stanford, so they pretty much have doubled up the errors. And the call there was Kendall Kip under the net as she made a dive to play that second contact. She went under the net, just couldn't stop her momentum from sliding forward. And she's calling for a towel to come out here after she ducked under and she ran into Shields. Now, if Kip made that play and there was no one in the area, they may not have called it. That's mm -hmm. one call that they're letting go to let players play. But if there's any sort of contact, or anything close to contact, what we've seen throughout this year pretty consistently is yeah. they get called, and that's why that was called back. And it's simply to prevent injury. But it's the result of a tough serve from Levinska, and here's another one. And that goes long, and it is set point for Arizona State. So you'd say so far, the team that's established the control at the service line is Arizona State. Feels that way. And even though the rest of the numbers don't look so good, they sit on set point. Another great serve by Levinska has Stanford on their heels here on set point. Sear tried to pick the spot but could not find it. Stanford still alive here in set one. Nice job by Stanford of forcing Levinska to play first contact on that free ball because she was not an option offensively when she came in short to pick up that free ball. This has been a difficult rotation for Arizona State to side out. Schroll controls it. Set to Sear. Off hands. Minor. Tight one for Ruben. Off the block and Stanford's got another point. Ruben just blasting off the hands of Shields. A front row setter right now. That's a really nice matchup for Elia Ruben. Set point number three for Arizona State. Levinska had to float it over. Miner was digging for it. And Francis, correction, Ruben, a lot of contact. We play on, off hands. Diving play to keep it alive for the Sun Devils. Sear finds his spot. Arizona State takes set one. The offensive numbers a little low, but the effort all out. And it's Arizona State who's able to come out on top of the first set after some dominating serves. feel like maybe they showed up and just didn't have their game face on. I think this is really interesting. The ace to error ratio for that second meeting on October 29th was plus one for Stanford, or excuse me, for Arizona State. And it was minus nine for Stanford. That is a 10 point swing, meaning Arizona State actually had more aces than errors. That doesn't happen very often. Stanford had nine more errors than aces, so gave away nine points. You're talking about a 10 point swing just from the service line. And that's the kind of team that Arizona State tries to be, dominate the game from the service line. So in that first set, Arizona State had two aces, no service errors. They have a service error on the first point of set number two. First set, three service errors for Stanford, no aces for Stanford, but the second set is a new set. Yep. It's a completely new story for Stanford as they get the ace. And already an error from Arizona State, and already an ace from Stanford to start, to start set two. Shields, Baird, Minor to swing by Ruben. Point Stanford. Three nothing start here in set two. Lots of Ruben, I think, is one of the big answers for Stanford. This is a team that is very pleasant, very consistent, <laughs> very uh, You're so kind. easy to play along with. And I think Elia Ruben gives them a nice little kick of fire that they might need here in set two. 
Drop down, Vicini and Kip teaming up. 4 nothing run to start the set for Stanford. Yeah, you can see Ruben even right there. She is very vocal. Kevin Hambly said yesterday that she's not afraid. She loves to fight, loves to compete. She's the one who's fired up and vocal. And he told her, I want more of that. We need more of that. Yeah. First point of the set for Jeter and the Sun Devils. Good choice there by Shields as she's floating off the net to force it a little into the middle, that fast tempo attack out of the middle just creates more looks there. Well, that worked out well, didn't it? Shannon Shields. Ruben decides to reach back and play that one, not sure if there's a defender behind her. And that's a decision they have to make as she leans over to talk to Ogilvy there. She doesn't want to play a ball that someone behind her has a cleaner look at. Ogilvy from the serve receive. Miner trying to set it up quickly to Piccini. And Arizona State has answered the 4 nothing run with a 3 nothing run of their own. Miner tries to come back to her middle blocker. We saw just moments ago, Arizona State with a kill out of the middle. The connection not there. And you have to feel like on this one, she's going to find Kendall Kip. Miner sends it back to Kip. On the overpass, Vicini gets this one to go. Not a kill for Kip that time, really just an off-speed roll shot over the block. But at her height, the angles that she hits at are just different than what you're used to defending. And even on that shot, she creates an overpass. Ogilvy to see her. Jeter out of the middle with the kill. And it's just such a great choice here by Shields because going to the middles is a great way to get one-on-one -on -one looks against a great blocking team. And as you see there, Stanford is waiting and reading and then trying to adjust to that and just not time to catch up with it. Kip. Shields, Levinska. Kip again, off hands, and a point for Stanford. And they kept using that power to overcome a block that is well set, in position, and yet she just blasts away. And a service error for Stanford. That is their fourth. Shannon Shields will head back to serve for the Sun Devils. Reiner, Rubin couldn't get it over the net. Arizona State was there defensively to tie it at six. They force Elliot Rubin to make first contact, and sometimes what that can create a rhythm for an outside attacker. They don't sometimes they don't mind making first contact. And it looked like that was gonna be the case for Elliot Rubin, but I think the placement of the set just put her in a position where she didn't have room to work around the block. And this swing Rubin a little far off the net. And now an attack from Sear and a good response by Arizona State after falling behind 4-0 to start this second set. Now, with Lavinska in the front row, you're not expecting a back row attack. That is a crafty little choice there by Arizona State to use shield, or excuse me, steer right down the middle. Sammy Francis on the slide. Sent back Lavinska. Ogilvy got there. Miner lays out. Shield back to Lavinska. Dug out by Bear. Levinska again, no getting this one. Levinska with the kill, that's her third. And Levinska coming alive. Now she's gonna be in positive numbers after that third kill. 
Interestingly, the core of this team, we've talked about the fact that J.J. Van Halen is first year as coach, but the core of this team is the same team as a season ago. They had McLaughlin make a move to the middle. She played on the outside a season ago, and they picked up Schroll, their libero, out of the transfer portal. Aside from that, just a remake of a team that was really together a year ago. Miner tries Ruben again. That's blocked out of play. Ruben swinging with purpose and with authority as she just turns that one hard off the block. Heads back to serve now for the Cardinal. Stanford has won 10 in a row. Their last loss was to Arizona State. Another service error, that's five. Not only do you have to side out at a high efficiency, but at some point, you have to point score off of your own serve. You're going to make a run. And then we've seen a couple of missed serves from Stanford, preventing them from stringing together some points. Sear. Dug out by Ruben. Attack from Kip. That's kill number 11 for Kendall Kip. Great communication between Miner and Kip as they use her a couple different ways out of right back. Look at this time, coming down in front of the setter, almost down the middle of the court, running a bit away from that left side blocker. Good diversity in that back row attack. I really like that look. Levinska blocked out of play. Point for Arizona State. Sun Devils took set one, 25-22. They're hitting 357 in this second set. After winning that first set, despite only hitting 051. Kip from the back row. This is one bounce into the bleachers. She hammers this right down the middle. One block from Arizona State. It looks like she's just swinging at an empty court. On uh, the overpass. Time to 10. And that might be just what Katie Baird needed to switch gears and sort of get things going after a rough first set. That's only going to be her second kill so far on the evening. Levinska blocked out of play. Point Arizona State. You can see the effort by Stanford there to turn the ball back in bounds as they're turning that one back toward the, park, the court and the power of Levinska to go so hard off their hands that it sails beyond the court. She has been so steady. She has missed just two matches in her four years with Arizona State. And that was due to illness. Stamper gets it back. So it's tied at 11. Another kill from Katie Baird. And when Stanford becomes very dangerous, when all of a sudden all three of their pins are killing balls. They're now with three kills. Also has eight digs and an ace. just in time. Dug out by Schroll, but out of play, and Stanford's back in front. The pickup by Ogilvy is just elite for her to come in, make a play on this ball, and make a controlled play on this ball. Up in a position where her setter, look, she keeps herself from going under the net, controls the ball. We mentioned that Kendall Kip repeated as Pac-12 Player of the Year, while Ogilvy repeated as Pac-12 Libro of the Year. Sets it back for Kip. Great job by Schroll to get there. Vinsky just has to send it over. Almost got a point out of it. Levinsky with the dig. Kip piling up the kills. 
That's 13 for Kim. We are getting spoiled here. Defense all around. It has been an evening of great volleyball, and we still got more to go. Arizona up 1-0. A reminder, Sunday afternoon on ESPN, 10th Annual Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase. It's a doubleheader at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, South Carolina, Utah, game one, 2.30 Eastern time, UConn, North Carolina, game two. But in between, it's the 23rd Annual WNBA Draft Lottery from Bristol. That's all coming up on Sunday. Was our little tree, was she still awake? I thought the eyelids were getting heavy. She's struggling, but she's still, she's still oh, with that's, us. She's a trooper. <laughs> they were in their seats hours ago, yeah. but the problem was that Texas and Tennessee took three hours and 11 minutes to play their five-set match. Out of the timeouts, it's a point for Stanford. Back up on top by three here in the second set. Vicini is a player who just does not often get the credit she deserves. She hits for such a high efficiency, leads the team in blocks, closes side to side, on and off the net. Just not the name that you maybe hear the most, but what a big contributor. Eight kills, hit 500 in that win over Houston. Tough one there for Sear to handle. But she got it off the Stanford block. Jelly Sear will head back to serve. There's the Stanford block for the point to go back on top by three. That's their fourth block. Great close here by Vicini, who we mentioned just moments ago. Leans into that seam, and Kendall Kip reaches in to take it away. The speed of the Arizona State offense can either work to their advantage or at times like that to their disadvantage because if the ball is fast but it's tight, that big Stanford block is going to be hard to deal with. Levitska gets the point for Arizona State. She's now up to a team high six kills. Two of the most elite right side attackers in the nation. Kimball Kip right handed. Levinska, you get a little different look from her as she comes through with that left hand. Levinska with 17 kills in each of the two sweeps for Arizona State in the first two rounds. with the big swing and the point for the Cardinal. Good choice here by Cammie Miner. It's a three-hitter rotation. She has options, and the blockers have to wait and see where she's going to go. She shoots one quick to the outside, and Elia Rubin, who is pretty used to looking at two blockers, is very thankful to have that look into the angle. Off the block, swing by Habello. Cabello fast, hard, and off blockers hands. That is her specialty. That's her third kill. Shields set to serve. Minor for Sammy Francis. Now to Ruben. Ogilvy kept it alive. The point continues. Now the point ends. Levinska off the block for the point. Shields does a great job. I, I mean, we felt like with a free ball, there's a good chance this is going to go to Levinska. But I like the fact that she puts a little air under it. Goes ahead and elevates it. She goes fast to her left sides, but gives Levinska a little more air under the ball. Levinska gets an easy one there to tie it at 16. Shields creating pressure from the service line, and this is where Arizona State can score points in a hurry when they can get hot from the service line. Kip from the back row, great dig by Shields. And off the block, the point for Stanford, Sammy Francis. 
The ghosts stand for Dwight at Credit Arizona State for making them work. They are forcing Stanford into longer rallies with huge digs like this one from Shields. Just steps in and takes that ball from Kendall Kip. Lipitzka's got another one. Seven kills this set for Marta Levinska. After just two, I believe, in set one, correct? Yes. Seven now. And it's crazy to think that Arizona State won set one without the offense from Levinska. Now they're getting it, and they need it because Stanford jumped out to a 4 nothing lead. And now they're back in front, 18-17 here in set two. Teddy Baird just looking at the defense, huge hole in the middle, doesn't always have to be the hard hit ball, just the ball that lands on the floor. Here's Pringle to serve. Sear punches it deep, minor to Baird. Shields to Sear. Levinska is blocked. Kept alive. Beautiful save by Arizona State. And it's a point for the Sun Devils. Great fight. McLaughlin, the middle blocker, makes a dive along the net to keep this ball alive right here with her right hand and then Schroll somehow is able to get it across the net. Incredible effort there from Arizona State. McLaughlin and the, as in the middle blocker is a player who we said played on the outside last year. No one expected her to necessarily be playing in the middle this year, but coach said she earned it. And boy, it plays like that that you like to see. Kip flies in for her 14th kill. Fourteen kills and hitting above four hundred. Mm. Good serve. Troll kept it alive. The block that's going to head out of play. Arizona State can't play that one. And Stanford is the first to twenty. And that not the sort of swing that we're used to seeing from Marta Levinska. Not a lot behind that one. So I don't think the connection was there where she felt like she could take a quality rip. Cammie Miner with the serve. And it's an ace. We mentioned that player for player, it's hard to find a roster that matches up with Stanford. Well, Cammie Miner also repeated as setter of the year in the Pac-12. Second ace of the tournament for Cammie Miner. Arizona State takes a timeout here in set two. Kendall Kipp's been on target as of, as of late. Hit 340 or better in each of the final five regular season matches. So now we're in match number three of the NCAA tournament. And as you mentioned, she's hitting over 400. She's already posted 14 kills and we're in set two. Haven't even finished set two. 14 kills on the board, over 400. Three blocks to go along with that. She is dominant right now. She has needed those kills to offset what's happening on the other side of the net with Marta Levinska, who has seven of her nine kills in this second set. But right now, Stanford on a little bit of a run, a three-nothing run to go up by three. They go to Levinska. Now Sear. Oh, that came up and ate up Katie Baird. That ends the run, a kill for Sear. Point Arizona State. Yeah, Katie Bear defensively sort of mid-court there where she could possibly pick up a tip. But that sharp angle shot from Sear just ate her up. Minor to Kim. Great job by Schroll. Baird off hands. Jeter. 
sent to the middle. Stroll, another one that gets over the net. Now Kip blocked back. Out of play, point Arizona State. In this particular rotation, you'll often see Kendall Kip stay on the left side, Katie Baird stay on the right side. They'll just swing from those positions over the course of the rally. They do so here, but they get blocked several times. Look at Mary Schroll. She has been quality out of the back row. And then you're going to see Katie Baird swinging from the right side after we saw Kendall Kip blocked from the left side. They typically play on opposite sides of the net, but then in that rotation, when they start there in serve receive, you'll often see them stay. And in that particular rally, Arizona State got the better of them with their block. Mary Schroll has 16 digs already. As for the blocks, six each. You can see by set, Arizona State winning set one. They had the advantage, but in set two, Stanford out blocking Arizona State. But Stanford forced to take a timeout right now after back-to-back -back points for the Sun Devils. To your point, Eric, 16 digs for Mary Schroll, and there's not another player in this match who's even in double digits yet. Ogilvy's at 13. Oh, excuse me, you're Stanford. right. Yep, she's down there at the bottom. I almost yep. missed her. No, nope, it's okay. I didn't. You know, this is what teammates do when Thank it's you. closing in at 11 o'clock <laughs> Pacific <laughs> time. Exactly. Yeah. We've been watching volleyball since 9 a.m. our time this morning when things got going between Louisville and Creighton in Pittsburgh. It has been a fantastic day of volleyball as we fully expected. Day, night, and morning. We've yeah. got you covered here. An exclamation point <laughs> on a great season. Levinska set to serve for Arizona State. Match before ours took three hours and ten minutes to play. This match started 9.50 Pacific time. Baird. Sierra blocks. Seventh block for Stanford. Kevin Vicini just waiting on her. And because uh, Shannon Shields just has a quick reaction, a bump set to the outside, obviously a placement not quite there. Jeter denied. Ogilvy bumps it over. Jeter couldn't get that one over. Now they try Sear. Miner goes back to who else but Kendall Kip. Nice pick up there by Elia Rubin. Asir tries to shoot one along the net and then the finish. 15 kills on 30 swings with three errors. Stanford won't get it over the net. Point for Arizona State. Feels as though Levinska has gone a little quiet here late in this second set. She's in the backcourt with what they use it. No using her here to service air and it's set point for the Cardinal. towards Kip. Blocked by Arizona State, but finished by Sammy Francis. And Stanford takes set two. Sammy Francis with the power tip leaves no doubt as she puts set two in the books. Kip denied, kept it alive, and then Francis is the one who finishes off set number two for the Cardinals, so they take set two 
25-21 the final. So we're on to set three, but first a brief intermission. And before we do that, we're going to talk with Kevin Hambly. So you get off to a 4 nothing start, Kevin, in set number two. What was the message coming out of set number one for your team? Well, I, we had eight hitting errors in the first set and gave them a lot of points. And we're not playing super clean right now. We're still making a lot of errors, a lot of nerves, I think. But everyone's kind of feeling in this. Both teams are making more errors than they typically do. And it's kind of like, let's just keep attacking the court, and, you know, scrap and fight on defense. I think we have a good plan. We just got to keep executing. I know Cammie Miner's capable of making great decisions, but uh, maybe there's no decision to be made. Is it just how much Kendall Kip can we feed here? <laughs> no, I mean, I think when times get tight and, and Kip can carry us, like right now we're, we're struggling a little bit to get some points out of the middle and all that. We're going to go back to it and see if we can get it going. But if we can't, we're pretty fortunate to have Kip that can get us out. Kevin, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Yeah. You've been in a set of piece as we head to set number three here at Maples Pavilion at Stanford University. Set one to the Sun Devils. Set two to the Cardinal. Set three coming up here at Stanford. Some of the scenes from the first two sets with Stanford and Arizona State now even as we get ready for set number three after Stanford took the second set. Eric Fried, Missy Whittemore back with you here at Maples Pavilion. Well, you talked about at the very top some of the stars for this Maples Pavilion Stanford Regional and Kendall Kipp, just talked about it with Kevin Hambly, how good she's been. Marta Levinska got going there in the second set, but then she kind of quieted down later in that second set. That made a big difference. I think Cam Kevin Hambly said it best. What a luxury. They, of course, you want to spread the offense. You want to be hard to defend. But when times get tough, when you've got Kendall Kip to lean into, that is certainly a luxury. <laughs> so what do you think of Levinska through two sets so far for Arizona State? You know, I think that Levinska has, a, you know, has the ability to lead with her offense, but she also creates emotion for Arizona State. When she's playing really well, they tend to catch fire. I think they could actually set her even more balls right now. Jelly Sear with 25 attempts and Levinska with 24. So I think they can get her even more balls. When you take a look at Stanford, Kendall Kip certainly leads the way in, in the number of attempts and actually has nearly 10 more than anyone else. So I wouldn't be surprised to see even a few more balls sent toward Levinska. She has nine kills on 24 swings, hitting 250. So we update the bracket. We just have one spot to fill in after a busy day of regional semifinal play. Wisconsin and Oregon will meet 8 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday. And the winner of this match will take on the Texas Longhorns close play out on Saturday night for the final spot in Tampa. Nebraska and Arkansas will meet as well after Arkansas knocked off Kentucky in five sets. Louisville needed five sets at the start of the day to take care of the Big East champions from Creighton and Pittsburgh with an impressive win over Washington State. And no matter which way this one goes, we will have two Pac-12 teams on to the regional final as Oregon has already advanced. And of course, one of these Pac-12 teams is hoping to join them. Stanford starts the set with an ace. That's how set two started for Katie Baird and the Cardinal. Abella. Miner sets it for Rubin. Levinska dug out by Miner, tight to the net. Miner up for it. Rubin rolls it. Sarah picks the spot. Nice timing there by Shields to go on over. Her team is absolutely scrambling. She's on the run. She throws it away from the block and over the defense. 
was Shields, the center, getting the point to tie it at one. Jeter with the serve. Minor. Kip. Pancake. Beautiful save by Shields. Ruben off the block for the point. Well, Coach J.J. Van Neal of Arizona State told us we have to be flying around defensively. And to credit Arizona State, they are doing that. It is just even more elite right now from Stanford, what we're seeing. Ogilvy. Cabello. Ruben. Off the tip. Point Stanford. Ruben blasting blockers' hands high and hard. That nice flat shot. Shields with the rip for the point. Shields at 5'10". And that might be with her shoes on as a setter. <laughs> Turns on that one, uses the left-handed offense. Shields, involved in just about everything so far in set three, now serving. Sear, bump back to Habello. Minor, the back set to Kip. For the kill, 16 for Kendall Kip. I look back at the box score in the last meeting between these two teams when Arizona State won 3-0 and Kendall Kip had six total kills in that entire match. She already has 16 here today. Levitska. Again, blocked out of play, point Arizona State. Swinging across her body and off the hands of Elia Rubin. Javen Ravensburg on the serve for Arizona State. And it's a good serve. Sear, Ogilvy can't get it. Point Arizona State tied at four. Jelly Sear, that ball just hanging up in the air. Shields is forced to use a bump set as she runs through it. And Jelly Sear cuts it sharp inside the block. Really well played. Joust at the net. Set back over by Arizona State. And they're in front here in the third. Levinska that time choosing to send it over on two. Doesn't let Shield set the ball. But instead, one hit, two hits quick over and is able to get it to the floor before that Stanford defense can get set. for Arizona State to go up by two. And when we talk about being a good service team, it's so important to serve well in every rotation. Keep the pressure on those passers because half of the passing game is mental and you want to wear them down just as much mentally as you do physically. Four nothing run right now for Arizona State. And Stanford ends the run. And guess who? Uh -huh. As Kevin Hambley said, what a luxury when we have to have her. We can go to Kendall Kiff. Well, Arizona State on a nice little run. They had to have it, and they find her in the back row. Ruben delivers the serve, and it's an ace. That's the fourth for Stanford. And they actually are ahead of 
Arizona State right now in terms of aces, and, and that is just an indicator. That is certainly not the complete picture because the aces don't always tell the story of how much pressure you're creating from the service line. Levinska, Kip will send it up into the crowd. That Levinska got some nice pace on that one. There's been a few swings where it didn't feel like they had quite the connection they were looking for, where she's had to take a little something off of the ball. Schroll. There it goes long. Arizona State on top by two. Grad student from Tempe, played at LMU the previous four seasons. Critical addition to this Arizona team at the Libero spot. That one is off the Sun Devils. And Sammy Francis picks up the point she'll check out. That'll put Sammy Francis back at zero. She was actually in negative numbers along with Katie Baird and McKenna Vicini. So not a whole lot of offense out of the middle right now for Stanford. Minor Kip on the run. Minor, big swing by Baird. Went off of Zadiska, and it's a point for Stanford. Great response by Baird there after the error to come back with a kill. That's going to be five now to go along with five errors. So she's back to zero. But Cami Miner choosing to create a little more speed that time. Some nice tempo on the ball that she pushes out to Baird. Vinska off the fingers. Schroll's been flying all over the gym and hitting the gym floor all night. This time she can't control it. And Stanford is back in front here in the third. And speaking of luxuries, the defense of Schroll for Arizona State is in a luxury right now. As you mentioned, she has been everywhere. Pringle serves. Gina for Sear. That's heading out of play, and it's a point for Arizona State. And there's always a decision to be made there, right? If you're McKenna Vicini and you're coming down, she turns to make a play on that ball. The question is always, do I make a play on this ball or let the person behind me make? And you have to hear them behind you. They have to call you off if they're there. If Vicini doesn't hear anyone, she tries to play the ball. It's a really difficult ball for her to play on her way down. She can't control it. So there has to be good communication. If the defender coming in behind can make a play on the ball, they have to call her off there. Slight delay to mop up the floor. And here is Levinska back to serve. Levinska does have one ace tonight. His fourth in the Pac-12 in aces this season. Miner looks for the point and she gets it. Cammie Miner, that's her first kill tonight, her 70th of the season. Pac-12 center of the year for the second consecutive season. At 60 assists in that five set win against Houston, tying her career high. Ready to serve with Stanford in front, even in a set apiece here in the third. Sear, too much for Oakley to handle, and we're tied again. Sear just unloads on this, and she and Shields have found great rhythm with the speed of their attack. It's not so fast that it's error prone, gives her room off the net to swing. Really nice connection. Kip's had harder swings of the night. That soft one will count just as much as the hard ones did all evening long. 18th kill for her. And another issue of communication that we saw similarly from Stanford moments ago this time, it is between Levinska and the off attacker there. 
as two players in position to likely make a play on that ball, and I think they hesitate not knowing who's going to take it. Minor kicks blocked back. Battle at the net, won by Ruben and Stanford. And you see Ruben there celebrate because she's had a few situations at the net where she's been used, and finally <laughs> she gets the better of one of those. 12 kills for Ruben, hitting at 300, also has nine digs. Abello turns it down. Good rip by Roberta Habello, the senior from Brazil. Texas coaching staff checking things out here. They will take on the winner of this match coming up on Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern time on ESPNU. That's Ruben again. Make it 13 now for Ruben. And she has the hot hand all of a sudden for Stanford. One dig away from a double-double, no surprise from what we've seen from Elia Ruben so far in the tournament. Four kills this set for Ruben. Levinska. Minor to Francis, that's still up. Caught the scoreboard, and it's a point for Stanford. And I mean just barely grazed the scoreboard, unfortunately, for Havella, who made a nice play on that. You can see the scoreboard hanging down. The underside just got brushed by that ball, went over the other side of the net. 14-11. Abello locked. Schroll got knocked back a couple of steps defending that swing. Ruben. Great job by Ruben. Sent it deep. Sear did all she could. Couldn't get there. And Ruben fired up. Leading by example as well. Stanford by four. Oh, she didn't make it. We, we, we thought maybe she'd be out like a light. For more information on all 90 NCAA championships, be sure to visit NCAA.com. You can't she, fault her she, effort. She wore her perfect free dress tonight. I know. And she was hoping for an 8.30 Pacific start time. Instead, we started about an hour and a half later than what we were expecting. Eyes are closed, but she's still going to see her cardinal through this one. <laughs> Even through closed eyelids? Okay. 15-11 yes. <laughs> Stanford out of the media timeout here in the third set. Thank you for being with us here tonight. 11-14 on the West Coast. And for those of you watching in the Eastern time zone, you're our kind of people. Yes. You're you. our kind of people. <laughs> And we're going to have a challenge here out of the timeout, going to challenge in or out on that call. So for the moment, it's called a service error on Stanford's Ogilvy, but Stanford challenging it to see if this was in on the serve. As a reminder, these two teams played twice in the conference season and both were 3-0 sweeps. Arizona State winning at home and Stanford winning at home. So third time is going to be a charm for one of these teams because it is going to advance them to a regional final. And remember, any piece of this line and the ball is considered inbounds. Well, does it catch the back five millimeters of that line? Huh. 
<laughs> I'll take I'm that. I'm typically <laughs> wrong on these, so I'll, I think I'll I'm just take gonna that, hold that my ha, tongue. That ha is definitely in the uh, inconclusive uh, department. It is, you. isn't it? My record uh, speaks for itself, and it, it's not—it's not good what it Go says. Go for it! Go for it! I felt like, Give me was something in, more I felt than like that was inconclusive, and so I, to me, if it's inconclusive, the call would stand. Good. And it does. That motion with the arm, that diagonal motion, says yep. Inconclusive. The point call stands. So Stanford down to one challenge. Minor to Kip. That's number 19. It amazes me, that, amazes me that McLaughlin was not playing in the middle a season ago. She's done such a nice job at the net from side to side. She gets a deflection on that, but because of Kendall Kip's ability to go hard and high off hands, the ball still travels well over the defense. Good quick offense, sending the middle to Maddie McLaughlin. And there she is again, McLaughlin, the player who, as we said just moments ago, did not play in the middle last season. Very limited playing time. They needed a middle this year, and she has made that transition. Earned her spot, coach said, and what a fun season to be a part of the ride. Ruben. Shields kept it in play. Levinska off hands. Back to Ruben. Sear goes off speed. Minor for Bear. Levinska for the point. Mary Schroll is such a key piece of the puzzle for Arizona State, and she is the player that they had to fill that role of Libero and they were able to pick her up from LMU. She returned home to Tempe, her, her hometown. Dug out by Ravensburg. Baird, Minor, Ruben. We're going to have a challenge, and we will. Looks like they're looking for a net violation. Holding up those three fingers would indicate a net violation is going to be the challenge here from Arizona State. So they'll look at the play and see if Stanford was in the nets during that sequence. J.J. Van Neal, the Pac-12 Coach of the Year, after assisting at his alma mater, USC, for five years. And we talked about it before when we went through his timeline, the fact that he took over less than a year ago. Mm -hmm. And here is this Arizona State team Playing at Maples with a chance to move on to the regional final. Okay, let's look. Anybody for Stanford in the net? Yep, I would say the net moves there. As they're coming down. It's going to yeah. be a good challenge. Yeah, it looks like Sammy Francis is on her way down. And I tell you what, that is just such a great example about high, high, how high above the net they play when it's their elbows touching the net on their way down. Incredible, isn't it? Is that spoken out of jealousy yes, from your All-American yes, days is. at Florida? Yeah. Not All-American days at Florida, yes, it is spoken out of jealousy. <laughs> but I tell you, this game is played so high above the net now, so physical, so much fun. And it is a net violation, so a successful challenge by Arizona State. Sammy Francis knows. Yes. <laughs> She tried smile. to have a straight face out there, not to give anything away, but she knows. Not until the call is made, and then you'll usually see him break the straight face for a moment. Sixteen, fifteen. 
service error for Arizona State. That's their third. And after that delay in play on a challenge that goes your way, it's always a bummer to give it right back to them. Rubin with the serve. Sear. Miner sets it back. That's off hands. Schroll got to another one. Can you believe it? But McLaughlin just couldn't clear the net. What an effort by Mary Schroll. Flying that little opening next to where we are. She has just been a pleasure to watch. She's all over the floor, Eric, but with such control. She controls that ball so well. 18-15. Caught the tape. Levinska. Battle at the net. Miner sets it back for Kip. Who has to reset her feet. And guess who? Troll flying in again. Baird missed the mark. Point Arizona State. And surprisingly, Katie Baird has just been a little error prone. Six kills, but six errors to go along with it. Has yet to find her groove. 18 total attack errors for Stanford. That's the fourth service error for Arizona State. Pringle, sophomore from La Jolla on to serve. Quickly worked, Stanford there defensively in the back row. There's Baird. Another one that's off the mark. And another point for Arizona State. The set there from Cammie Miner to Katie Baird just didn't look right. Katie Baird either early or the set just over her shoulder. You see she has to reach back behind her, and that's what causes the ball to travel out of bounds over the antenna. Katie Baird missed the middle, excuse me, the beginning of the season. Kip is going to get a touch call on that one, and so... A much-needed side out there for Stanford as Arizona State was starting to mount a run. But back to Katie Baird, she had missed uh, the beginning of the season with some injury. And so sometimes you'll see players who have missed part of the season go through some ups and downs. Sear flying in to try to save it was minor. It's a point for the Sun Devils. Jelly Sear heads back to serve for Arizona State. Minor to bear, this time they're synced up and it pays off with a bear kill. Big time look from Baird right here. Perfectly in unison with Cami Minor. Great choice there behind. Lots of space in that block. Very been good for the service line today. Vinska. Oh, man. A lot on that one. Heavy arm that time for Levinska. She racks up her 14th kill now, hitting 306. Claire Jeter to serve for Arizona State. Sierra blocked back. The Genie and Kip team up for the block. Great block help there from Kendall Kip, who is such a capable defender at the net. But of course, you want her up on any back row attack. Eight. 
Eight blocks now for the Cardinals. Six for Arizona State. 22-19. And a timeout now called by Arizona State. We talked about the serve being so critical in the first two matches this year, the team that controlled the service line. And there's no shortage of players who have piled up impressive serve, serve statistics, he tried to say. And look at the numbers here. And it's not just one or two players putting, I mean, Kip 51. Yes, that's in a little bit of a different part of the orbit, but that's a lot over 30. Yeah, that is a side. solid serving lineup. Yes. The fact that every player who steps back there is able to create pressure. And that is, that's a handful for a passing line. Yeah, Kendall Kipp getting the midnight snack in almost literally right now. Just before 11.30 Pacific time and you gotta keep the energy up. I mean, this is, this is late night. It really is. Passing it around, everybody taking a bite of the PB&J there. Gotta keep, keep that energy flowing. Yeah, everybody's making sure they're getting a little uh, something to eat here on this late night at Maples Pavilion. The reason why we're so late is because match number one between Texas and Tennessee took longer than three hours to play before Texas won it in five. 311 is the time they had on the official stat sheet, so we'll go with that. Madison Skinner at 26 kills, hit 328 in the five setter. Morgan Fingal at 24 kills for Tennessee as the Lady Ball season comes to a close. What a match. Here's Levitzka with timeout, and here's a block. Francis Rubin at the net for the Cardinal. This particular rotation has trouble written all over it for Arizona State. Only two attackers, and it's McLaughlin, who we have aforementioned did not play in the middle last year. And then Cabello out here on the left side. So they're, they're outside in their middle who are not as offensive. Out of that timeout, they went to Levinska to try to save him here in this rotation. Do they do the same thing? Set point for the Cardinal. Ogilvy to serve. McLaughlin, denied by Stanford. Kip. Arizona State still alive. And you see the pump of the fist there by Levinska trying to get a little mojo on Arizona State's side. Even if they drop this set, it be nice to make a little push here and create some momentum moving forward. Elliot Rubin says there'll be no momentum on my watch for you, Arizona State. Rubin gets the kill. 15 kills for Rubin in the set. She had six in that third set. Stanford's on top, two sets to one, heading to set four here at Maples. Not how she's using her voice more, but you know what she can do. She can bring it on the court. She had six kills in that third set. She is leading this team in tournament play in terms of kills per set. She's also leading them with emotion bringing some fire to the Stanford team, who, you know, at, at times has played with a lot of pressure. This is a group that we mentioned several times. On paper, no one thinks they can be beat, and they've had to live up to that on the court. It's felt heavy at times. We saw them, you know, after going up two sets to none against Houston, all of a sudden get pushed to a fifth set. And Coach Hambley said to us, hey, we talk about these things. We, we have to live in the moment. This is what it feels like to die. This is what it feels like to have your season on the line. He said, they're human. They feel all of that. And we got to learn to play through it. And sometimes it's the best thing that can happen to you is to have a match like that early in the tournament, battle through, take that weight off your shoulders and move on forward. 
Fourth set is underway, and it starts with a Kendall Kip kill. That's her 21st. And you know very well, you were in this building calling the NCAA tournament last year when San Diego ended Stanford's season in five sets. Yeah, and they had match point in set four. Or no, excuse me, we're up 23, 22, I believe, in set four. Had an opportunity to shut the door, and San Diego came storming back. And so this is a team that maybe needed to learn to finish, and this fourth set becomes very interesting to me. Can they keep their focus up two to one? They, they tend to look like a team who at times loses focus when they're winning. So can they keep their focus here? I think it's really important for this Stanford team to keep their focus over the course of the fourth set and go ahead and shut the door here. Pabello McLaughlin shut the door on the block for Arizona State to get their first point of the fourth set. Liner to Rubin, saved, but not over. Point Stanford. Another great effort by Arizona State to at least keep that point going as long as they did. Look at this defensive effort by Arizona State. That They know that is how they compete against teams who are bigger, more physical, than they are. It is with all-out defensive effort, and they've put it forth. Liner over to Kip. Liner goes to Francis in the middle for the kill. Has it been an abundance of offense out of the middle for Stanford? But boy, in transition is a good time to get it going. And I love the fact that Sammy Francis is off the net and transitioning hard there over the course of the rally. Off the hand, Sear gets the kill. That's a block I would not like to meet. Sammy Francis alongside Kendall Kip, and yet Sear, because of the speed of their offense, is able to compete. Nice, quick arm, and she finds a seam. Here's Schroll. That one's going to sail long. Fifth service error for Arizona State. Kendall Kip back to the line. Led the Pac-12 this season in aces. Lewinska. Set for Kip. Ogilvy with the dig. Minor to Ruben. Ogilvy stepping into the angle. And as I said of Schroll moments ago, Ogilvy as well. They don't just make first contact, they control first contact. That's what sets them apart. Service error number seven for Stanford. Levinska back to serve. Fourth year senior from Riga, Latvia. That's going to go long. And we have seen Marta Levinska get hot from the service line over the course of this match and create a lot of issues for Stanford. So a big sigh of relief from the passing line as that one sails long. On the overpass, Stanford takes advantage. Up by four early here in the fourth. Elliot Rubin for Stanford this time, putting pressure on the pass. Set back Levinska. And ducking out of the way just in time. Bit of a matrixy move there to avoid the contact. And I think we're going to have a challenge here that there was a touch by Stanford. And yes, Arizona State is challenging. 
mean, Ruben just leaping out of the way. Did she make any contact? Was there any contact at the net, perhaps with Francis? It's going to be what they're looking at here. You've got Baird and Francis at the net. You've got Ruben bailing out. Now this is a quick challenge. Oh, there's the touch right there. Francis, right? Now that was a quick review, too. A look up and they're done. So successful challenge by Arizona State. Point for the Sun Devils. Did you notice how shallow in the court Elia Rubin was there yesterday in practice? Coach Hampus said to her, I love your courage. Stepping into the middle of the court ready to take a blast, but he was egging her to stay deeper to play balls high off the blocker's hands. That's not the case there, and that's why she was stepping up into the court. Cheater at the net with the block. The pass by Katie Beard and then right back to her. And off of the bump set, that ball ends up high and tight inside. And Jeter all over it. Service error again for Arizona State. Kevin Hambly's team dropped set one. Arizona State had a couple of aces in that first set. But Stanford taking sets two and sets three. Violation on Stanford. And I think Kevin Hambly's going to challenge this one. The players say no. Kevin Hambly says to them, I can read his lips, are you sure? They say no. All right, back to the monitor we go. We'll take a look. Yep, there's contact in the net there. You know, and it's interesting here, because for the players to say no at a moment like this that doesn't seem particularly overly important, you wonder if, if with their sleeve they don't feel that contact with the net. Because I don't know why they would, at this point, encourage Coach to challenge if they knew that they had touched the net there. Pacini and Miner are having a good laugh about it. Mm -hmm. Like, did you, did you say no? No, you said no. Wait, right. who said no? They should have said no to the challenge because that was a quick review. And Stanford has used their final challenge of this fourth set. So that's it. If we go to a fifth set, they will be... Granted one challenge. So we're early here in the fourth set. Ogilvy tried, could not save it. And here come the Sun Devils. Back down by one. We saw the Tennessee Libero on a diving play earlier tonight, injured. Yeah, they're giving and now it's just, over. Yeah, just a moment it looked like Missy just to gather herself. She seems to be okay. Now Jay Torres went out with an injury for Tennessee. And Lady Balls scrambled and pieced it together. Had a match point in the fourth set, but Texas fought off that match point. And Emily ended up winning in five. That's a point for Stanford. Cammy Miner back to serve for the Cardinal. The fans felt like there should have been 
a double hit contact called against Arizona State. It was not, and instead they get a net violation against the Cardinal, and they don't like that either. Their shields. Niner, Kip, for the kill. 22 for Kendall Kip, that's a new season high. She reached 21 kills three times this year. It's the sixth time she's gone for 20 or more this season, and now she's one kill shy of her career high. And just an appreciation shout out for Cami Miner, who going to her knees well off the net has so much strength in that set to hang it up there for Kendall Kip. Ace. Katie Baird has been strong from the line tonight. That's her third service ace. And it just feels like Sanford starting to pull away here. Timeout called by Arizona State here in the fourth set with Stanford up two sets to one. A reminder, Sunday afternoon on ESPN, it's the 10th Annual Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase doubleheader at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. UConn will take on North Carolina to close out the doubleheader. South Carolina, number one team in the country, taking on Utah at 2.30 Eastern time to get the day started. And in between, it's the 23rd Annual WNBA Draft Lottery from Bristol. Out of the timeout, Katie Baird ready to serve again for Stanford here at Maples Pavilion at Stanford University. Eric Freed, Missy Whittemore, and our tremendous hardworking crew who should put in for overtime tonight. Ooh, there's a block. Good job by McLaughlin at the net. Big play out of the timeout for Arizona State. Come out, score points defensively. See if you can create a little momentum. Ravensburg. Serves it at Baird. Ruben uh, set beautifully by Miner. And Ruben's got her 18th kill. What a great choice by Cami Miner. Able to hold the middle blocker. These nice steady hands. They've got that middle attack coming down with Vicini there and instead sends it right past her to the outside and big cross-court swing from Elliot Rubin. That's 50 total kills in the NCAA tournament so far for Rubin. Cross-court tied at the net, that worked out well and maybe better than it should have for Arizona State, and they know it. And again, fans here in the stands do not agree. They feel like there's been a couple missed contacts, double contacts on second ball for Arizona State that the officials have let go. Ruben. That's another one for Ruben. Closing in on 20. She had a career high 23 last time out in that five center against Houston. Ruben playing off the approach of Sammy Francis, who you see right there, 17 in white. Sammy Con hard in front, and Ruben just over her shoulder for somewhat of a front little X there. Sear off the block for the point. And we said before the break, it feels as though Stanford's starting to pull away. But I'll tell you what, never count Arizona State out. This is a team, people were looking to their first round match against Georgia. Kind of had it circled, thinking, oh, this is going to be really competitive. Well, their first two rounds were not competitive. Because Arizona State blew right through those first two rounds without dropping a set. And here they are in the regional. Punching back now against Stanford. That win over Georgia, a sweep, was their first NCAA tournament win since 2014 and Arizona State hit 427 in that sweep. Follow that up with an impressive performance against BYU at a very tough place for teams to play, Smith Fieldhouse. Sammy Francis, Shields, Barrett got there. Minor sets Ruben again. Backhanded over, Ruben has it, Minor, Francis. Francis, set it back. And 
Sammy Francis. I don't know what I like better, the play at the net or her reaction to her teammates, but she brings <laughs> these fans to their feet. She's like, how did that drop kind of face? And like, oh, it dropped, yeah, let's celebrate. <laughs> It's got blocked, Francis and Baird teaming up at the net. And you're seeing Sammy Francis in the middle, watch her, she's waiting, waiting, the set is made, and such great movement to her left. Closing that block, that is hard to do when you're reading and then releasing, your first step has to be solid. 11 team blocks for Stanford, and when you're hot, you're hot. Elia Rubin got plenty of tape, but it had enough to get over for the ace. That's hitting the scoreboard, but it came down on the Arizona State side, so it's still in play, but not much that Arizona State could do with it after that, and it's 17-12. And Arizona State will use their final timeout. We talked about the team that had the edge at the service line was gonna have the edge in the match, and Stanford seems to be that team right now. Early in this match, there were a couple rotations where I felt like Arizona State had the edge, but we've seen the passing line from Stanford hold steady and actually get better over the course of the match. They haven't backed away from it. They stood in there really solid, passed with confidence, lots of communication. And in a couple of those key rotations, we've seen some errors from Arizona State, which of course you're gonna see when you're going back and serving that aggressively and trying to put pressure on, there's gonna be some misses along the way. The Cardinal had won 29 in a row in Pac-12 play before running into Arizona State on October 29th. And that kind of put a lot of doubt in a lot of followers' heads saying, wait a minute, what's going to happen here? The most recent match was an Arizona runaway against Stanford, but Arizona State came out, took set number one, and Stanford has responded well since then, the home winning court, two and three. The home court seems to have been a factor for these uh, teams in terms of the matchup. You know, Cardinal winning at home, Arizona State winning at home. But I think right now what's most important for Stanford is to finish really strong, to close out a match on a high note, not allow an opponent back in. Going into to a match, if they could seal the deal here and go in against Texas, I think they feel a lot better if they're able to finish on a strong note. Coming off of that Houston match, it almost felt like they dodged a bullet. It didn't feel like they were in control. Point for Arizona State. Jeter does such a nice job here, staying with her setter, traveling along the net. And you see Sammy Francis trying to follow, but leaning, that block is leaning. That's why Jeter has the advantage. Baird, great job by Sear. Miner looks for the kill. Now Miner looks for the assist. Miner to Francis. And again for Stanford, we're seeing success for the middle, in particular in transition. This is exactly when Cami Miner wants to find her. Over the course of a long rally, it's easy to lose sight of your defensive assignments and for your backcourt defense, just no time to prepare for that attack from Sammy Francis. <laughs> Set back Levinska. And Kip was there, but couldn't handle it. That's a kill for Levinska. That's number 16 for her. And you saw that reaction from Kip herself as she looks up at the board trying to see it again. She's thinking, I was right where I needed to be. Peter to Baird, Miner to Vecini. Out of play, point Stanford. 
Cami Miner, I'll tell you what, she she relied on Kip a little bit early when things were shaky for the Cardinal. But as Coach Hambly said, we want to spread it around if we can. And right now they can and Cami Miner are getting everyone involved. Levinska. Miner with the dig. Ogilvy to Baird. Arizona State with the point. Katie Beard trying to put a little something on that, even though it's an out-of-system ball off the net, and I can appreciate that. Shannon Shields back to serve for Arizona State. Minor to Kip. Great job by Arizona State to get it up, stay in this point. Minor to Baird. And Cammie Minor just having fun now, showing off her weapons, seeing if she can get a kill for everybody here. Minor over 50 assists on the night, up to 52 now, and Katie Baird into double figures with 10 kills. Shields to Levinska. That's number 17 for Marta. The high deep corner. That is the sweet spot if you can find it. Ravensburg to serve. Yep, Stanford sides out again. Such steady passing right now against this Arizona State team who can be so dangerous from the service line, and we're just seeing nice, consistent passing now from Stanford. Closing in on a match win. Just three points away now. Good block set up by Kendall Kip. Just daring Sear to try to swing down the line. Shields back for Levinska. Dropped down by Francis and by Ruben. The length at the net of Sammy Francis uh, is on her way down. She just taps it right back at him. 12 team blocks now for the Cardinal. Shields works it quickly to Maddie McLaughlin for the kill. Good look by Maddie McLaughlin there in front on serve, receive. Ogilvy sets it over to Kip. Schroll, another up for her. Punched over the net by Sear. They look for Kip again, but that's going to be off the mark. When the ball's coming over your shoulder in transition, it's a high ball that you're receiving out of the back court. It's just difficult to find your bearings on the floor, exactly where you are and where you're swinging. Schroll clips the tape. Ruben. Here, three straight points for Arizona State, and Stanford will take a timeout. Arizona State just transitioning, 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 trying to turn rallies into points, and see are able to do so. So 23-19, Stanford taking the timeout. It is now midnight 
here on the West Coast. And this regional semifinal day began Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time. And you can see what's happened on our side of the bracket with Wisconsin picking up a victory in four sets against Penn State and Oregon with the sweep of Purdue. And we've talked about the Texas five-set marathon. Their win over Tennessee, the winner of this match, will take on the Longhorns, the defending national champions, on Saturday night. And aren't these coaches glad that the tournament has now built in a day of rest for the players between the regional semifinal tonight and the final that will be on Saturday. Here's the other side of the bracket. Arkansas with the five-set win over Kentucky. First regional final appearance for the Razorbacks. Jill Gillen at 20 kills at 391. Another big match from her. She's just had never-ending string of big matches in her great Arkansas career. Pittsburgh and Louisville setting up a rematch Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, an all-ACC regional final. First meeting was a Louisville sweep. Second meeting, Pitt with a reverse sweep. Louisville had a match point. That point difference, the difference between who's hosting between exactly Pittsburgh right. and Louisville. And Stanford hoping for a rematch here as well as they would like to play Texas again. Arizona State building some momentum. It's not too late for a team that we've seen go on runs during the season where they have picked up 28 wins. Four straight points here. And it ends with a service error. Great communication there between Baird and Elia Rubin. Oh. Hang on a second, Stroll's going back. Timeout's being called by Stanford. So I don't know if there was, I looked at the side judge, I don't know if the up judge made the call on something, but it's, let's take you back through it here as Stanford takes the timeout. Yeah, that's on the line. And I believe the up official is the one who overturned that call, and I'm not sure, obviously, and I'm not sure that Stanford disagrees because we don't get a challenge. Well, that's the key here, right? Stanford does not have a challenge left here for this fourth set. That's right. They go to five, they get one back, but it's going to be Arizona State point, so it's 23-21 after the Schroll ace. Five, nothing run. These three Stanford passers pass in every rotation, side by side. Elia Rubin, Katie Baird, Elena Ogilvy. It can create a lot of rhythm, but you have to feel like it can also create a lot of pressure and that they never get a mental break from passing. They have to be locked in the entire match. You talked about it before, the pressure. And it's building up here a little yeah. bit here late in the fourth set on Stanford. Schroll has been all over this court tonight. That one is long. It is a service error, and it is now match point for Stanford. in the regional final on Saturday. The final Pac-12 meeting between these two as they go their separate ways next season and it goes to the Pac-12 champion, Stanford. The Cardinal take two out of three this season against Arizona State. And the second one, the most important one. It sends the Cardinal on to their fifth regional final in seven seasons. So they will play Texas for a spot in the national semifinals. 
Stanford's been to 23 national semifinals. What a marquee matchup that is. The defending national champions against a team that's won nine national titles. Texas absolutely waiting in the wings for another shot at Stanford to avenge a loss from earlier this season. So the Texas staff, they've seen enough. It's time for bed for everybody. At 3.04 a.m. Eastern time, the match comes to a close. 12.04 Pacific, and it's time to go home and crawl into bed and go to sleep. What a day here at Stanford with the Cardinal picking up a victory. Over Arizona State, 3-1 is the final. Just waiting for everything to get set up here for our special guest who's joining us right now. Kendall, you ready to go? Yes. Okay, good. Kendall Kipp is with us after another fantastic performance. You, you were flying all over here today, and this is a team you know very well. And the last time you played them, they beat you. So what needed to change, and what did change tonight against Arizona State? Yeah, they're a great team. They've had an amazing season, and we just knew that they were going to come out and scrap, and they weren't going to give us this game. And I think last time we backed down a little bit when they put up a fight at their place. So I think we just knew we needed to stay the aggressors tonight and stay patient, and I think we did a really good job doing that. Kendall, how important was it to close it out in four, kind of walk away from this as the aggressor, as you would say, and feeling confident going into Saturday? Yeah, I think it's super important. One, for our bodies, you know, we were feeling tired. Everyone was leaving it all out on the court, so it's huge to finish it in four. And then just a fifth set, anything can happen in the tournament, and you don't want to let it get to that point. So when you have the chance to finish a set, you got to do it. I mean, you're a college kid. You're used to staying up after midnight. It's 12.07, though. You want to call it a day? You yeah, want to wrap it up I'm right ready there? for bed. All right, that's it. Just two questions, and you're done. Kendall, congratulations. We'll see you here on Saturday. Thank you. Kendall yes. Kipp, another great performance. 23 kills, hit 291, leading Stanford to a victory over Arizona State. Congratulations to the Sun Devils. Previous three seasons were all losing seasons. This year was far from that. They go 28 and seven, but their season comes to a close here at Stanford. So it is Stanford and Texas coming up on Saturday. For Missy Whittemore, Carol Lagana, Dennis Lenius, our entire crew, Eric Free, good night.